telling you them fiddles and the guitars really flew. And that poor took off by a flying squirrel, flew out way around the world, scattered wives and children all over the side of that mountain. Expletives mm -hmm. deleted. <laughs> <laughs> Well, finally we got to the West Coast, broke and I was so hungry I thought I'd cook. But we managed to rustle up his butter too, and the wife cooks up potato stew. Poor kids full of it. Mighty din stew though. Read a magazine right through it, still see all the pictures. You no, know, always did sort of figure if that stew had been just a little bit thinner, some of these here palms, which you could see through it too. Well, now, with a song like that, that's maybe a, a harder song to do, and I don't think many of those have quite the staying power. But uh, talking songs, uh, there are some, uh, there are a few ballads, well, I'll do one. Uh, well, there's one, The Avondale Mine Disaster, that uh, the arrangement of of it is much more talking. It has, you know, has a tune. Uh, it dates out in the mid, mid 1800s, late 1800s. Here's one from uh, from the Ozarks. Uh, <coughs> there was a wagon train that was uh, ambushed at Mountain Meadows in Utah, uh, in southern Utah, out of Cedar City. And the song is called, referred to as Mountain Meadows Massacre something like uh, 150 people or so were killed. Um, the wagon train started from just outside of Harrison, Arkansas. And if you're ever on the town square at Harrison, there's a fine monument there with the names of all who died. There were something like eight or 10 small children who survived it. One of the interesting things about the massacre is uh, it was done by Mormons. So it was whites against whites. And there's a monument at, uh, at Mountain Meadows in Utah. Uh, it's hard to find it. They've kind of hidden it across a few ditches. But I've been to, uh, to both monuments. And uh, this is a song that maybe I've, I've heard it from one person in the last. You know, now that people are collecting these things, you hear them where you shouldn't be hearing them. It's just you want to. Uh, but... Uh, I've heard several variants of it here in the Ozarks, so I think it, you know, had some some popular reign here. But um, <clears throat> at any way, at any rate, uh, this this approaches a talking song. <clears throat> um, let's see if I find the key I like. <coughs> you're doing that, I'll tune. I've been needing to do that the last week or two. <laughs> I'm getting worse. How are you doing? <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> 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 That's wild. That's a lot of fun. You, I think, I think folk music should be fun. You know, you you go to places and people get really up uptight about doing things. You gotta be perfect. Right? <laughs> I played too much. <laughs> Come all you sons of the and to my rhyme it is of a bloody massacre ye presently shall hear in the splendor of a mountain sun forty wagons came 
And they were attacked by an evil band. Oh, Utah, winners are In Indian. <laughs> in Indian colors, all dressed in shame. This bloody band was soon all for to attack those wagon trains in mountain meadows green. They attacked them in broad daylight as they were on their way. They soon put out their wagons all and fought in great then lead the evil leader of the band to them his word did give that if they would give up their arms it surely let them live and when they had give up their arms thinking their lives to save the word was passed among the band that sent them to the And when they had given off their arms, they started for Cedar City. They descended on them in the Indian style. Oh, what a human pity. They melted down with one accord, like wax before the flame. Both men and women, young and old, oh, you talk with our shame. Both men and women, young and old, a lion in their door. And such an awful sight and sound was ne'er beheld before. Their property was divided among this bloody crew. And Uncle Sam is bound to see this bloody matter through. His soldiers will be stationed throughout this Utah land. All four to seek those murderers out and lead them to his hand. By order of their president, this evil deed was done. He is the leader of the Mormon church. His name is Brigham. almost a, uh, a spoken poem with the, uh, you know, with, with the music. And a similar thing, all right, I'll do the Avondale Mind Disaster. Uh, the, the massacre must have been about 1865, 66, somewhere in there. And this must have been immediately after it. So I put it in in that time period. It was a very, very bitter incident, and one has to know a lot of the, the history of, of the Mormon people, and particularly the, the very zealous ones there in South Utah. And Lee, who was mentioned in that, was John B. Lee, for whom Lee's Ferry on the Colorado River is, is named. A very important figure in the Western, Western history. And uh, <coughs> Lee was the only person hung for it, and uh, he was hung by the by the army. And uh, as a result of the massacre and some of the stuff, uh, Utah was admitted to the Union, but not as Deseret, as the Mormons wanted, but named after the Ute Indians, which are about the grungiest Indians in Utah, which says something about attitudes toward toward the people at the time. And uh, sometime read the uh, the monument in the town square in Harrison. You won't read a much more bitter one anywhere. And uh, you know, as, and the song is a particularly 
bitter hard thing to, uh, to sing. And those songs, I think, uh, that's a bit too bitter to last. One of the reasons a lot of the Woody Guthrie stuff drifts around is it has, uh, you know, a strain of good in it. It's kind of a happy song. It may be kind of sad like Ramblin'. But, you know, it's got a nice lilt to it. But that song is just a depressing thing, as is the Mines of Avondale. And uh, I've only heard that from one or two people. <coughs> I'll do the Mines of Avondale. I'll get you thoroughly depressed. <laughs> As soon as I find a good key. Okay. Machines! <laughs> good Christians all, both great and small, I pray you lend me. And listen with attention while the truth I do declare. When you hear my lamentation, It'll cause you to turn pain All about the suffocations In the minds of Adam hmm. On the 14th day of September in 1869 Those miners all, they got a call To go work in the mines but little did they think that day that death would bloom their day before they would return from the mines of Avondale. The women and the children too, their hearts were filled with joy to see their men go to work again and likewise every boy. What a terrible sight in the broad daylight that made them all turn pale when they saw the breakers burn in the mines of Avondale. From here and there and everywhere they gathered in a crowd, some tearing off their clothes and hair and crying out aloud, Get out our husbands and our sons, for death is going to steal. Lies away without delay from the minds of Adam. But all in vain, there was no hope, one single soul to save. There was no second entrance to this ignominious cave. No pen can write the awful fright and hoard it prevail. All among those dying victims. In the mind of Adam. Sixty seven was the number that in one group was found. They seemed to be awaiting their sad fate underground. They found the father with his son clasped in his arms so frail. Those were hard rending scenes in the minds of Adam. Now to conclude and make an end, the number to pin down. One hundred and ten of brave stout men were smothered underground. There in their graves till their last day, their widows weep and wail. And often cry, still rend the skies. All 